All right, let's talk about some of the pitfalls of early retirement. What are some of the things that can derail your early retirement? What do you need to think about if you want to retire early? That's what I want to talk about today on the Your Financial EKG YouTube channel. I want to go through three separate scenarios and show you how the pitfalls of early retirement affect each of these scenarios. Now, we're going to use the same amount of retirement savings. We're going to use differing amounts of Social Security because of claiming. And we're also going to look at three different ages, retiring at 55, retiring at 60, and retiring at 65. And I want to go through the pitfalls of each specific scenario. But first, let's talk about three reasons that you need to be aware of if you're gonna retire early. What are some pitfalls if you're retiring early? Well, the first thing you need to think about is Social Security. When are you gonna claim Social Security is a question I always like to ask, but what about how is Social Security affected when I stop working early? Because for Social Security, you have 35 earning years that they use to calculate your PIA, which is your primary insurance amount, which is basically the check that you'll get at full retirement age. If you were born after the year of 1960, your full retirement age is 67. If it's before that, if you were born pre-1960, it's 66 and however many months, depending on your birthday. Now, you want to understand that your lifetime earnings are what's important to calculating your full retirement amount with Social Security. So over a 35 year period, if you retire early and you don't have 35 working years, then your Social Security will be less than what you're seeing on your statement. Because the statement you get from SSA.gov, Social Security Administration, is basically saying, hey, if you keep earning this income until your full retirement age, this is what your Social Security will be. But if you retire early and you don't make that amount of income, your PIA, your primary insurance amount for Social Security will be less. So you gotta understand that. That's the first pitfall you wanna understand if you're gonna retire early. The second pitfall you wanna be aware of when it comes to retiring early is where's my health insurance gonna come from? What about my health insurance premium? Not just where is it gonna come from, because it's probably gonna come from the marketplace, which is Obamacare or the Affordable Health Care Act, but how much is that gonna cost? Because you've really gotta start calculating in, is health insurance gonna be for me? Is it gonna be for my spouse? Do I have dependents that I have to carry? Listen, the average cost of health care here in Florida for someone in their 50s on the open market is $500 a month. That is a middle grade plan, which is a silver plan on the marketplace, and that's for a single person. Now, add in a spouse, that's $1,000. Now, maybe add in one kid who's still in high school or college and say it's just 300 bucks for them. Now you're looking at $1,300 a month. Have you planned for that in your early retirement? So if you retire at 55, you've gotta have $1,300 extra per month for health insurance. And you got to do that for 10 years. And keep in mind, the inflation on healthcare is running about 9%, not 3.27, which is the 108 year average for inflation. No, 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 9%. And if you have chronic health needs, chronic means you're not dying, then you got to understand where's the money going to come from for my medical care, my prescriptions. That's the second pitfall that you need to think about if you're going to retire early. Now the third pitfall you need to be thinking about if you're going to retire early and we're going to get into this on the board because we're going to look at the first pitfall which is a lesser social security amount. We're going to look at the second pitfall health insurance all that's on the board but the third pitfall is what I like to call the guardrail rule or as some advisors call it the risk capacity rule. Now what is the guardrail rule? Well for me the guardrail rule is this. Does my portfolio have the ability to generate the kind of retirement income that I need to last for the duration of my retirement? And am I taking the appropriate amount of risk to earn that distribution for my retirement income? Or am I outside of the guardrails? Because maybe you're taking too much risk and so you're putting your portfolio at risk of market loss and you've got to live off that for 30 or 40 years, you're outside of the guardrail. Or maybe you're super conservative and you're not taking enough risk and you're outside of the guardrail. You've got to make sure your portfolio is aligned 
in the guardrail rule. And we're going to talk about that here in just a second on the board. It's so important. You know, I hear about the 4% rule and I've talked about the 25 extra rule on here, or the replacement ratio, but you've really got to understand the guardrail rule when it comes to retirement income, because you want your retirement investing account portfolio to work inside of a guardrail to make sure that it's invested for you where you're at today to generate the retirement income that you need today and so that that will be a longevity asset for you. So maybe you're 55, but you still want that asset to be there when you're 90 or you want some kind of bucket approach where you're paying down different buckets, but all that matters is that those buckets are there when you get to 90 or 95, the guardrail rule. It's so important to understand how my income is going to be distributed and how long it's going to last. You ready to get into some scenarios? Let's go. All right, let's look at three different scenarios and I want to put these pitfalls that we've talked about into place. I want to talk about a lower social security amount because you retire early, which means the social security you check you get at your full retirement age is less than you see on your ssa.gov statement or your social security statement that you get on a yearly basis because you haven't or you have put in your 35 working years we're going to look at that we're going to look at health insurance if i retire at 55 i've got to carry health insurance for 10 years until i get to medicare if i retire at 60 i got to carry health insurance for five years until i get to medicare how is that going to affect my retirement income plan? And then finally, we're going to look at the guardrail rule, which is the longevity of our retirement investing accounts and how long will our retirement income last? Because listen, I don't want to get to mid 70 and run out of income. I don't want to get to mid 80 and run out of income. Now, if we're getting to 80, we're getting pretty close to where we want to be, but I would rather have a plan that gets us to 100. Even if you think you're going to die early, I want to get you to 100. So let's look at this. All right. So the first strategy is, can I retire at 55 with $800,000? And then we're going to look at, can I retire at 60 with $800,000? And can I retire at 65 with $800,000? And let's assume these are three different people, all within about a 10 year age range, all with about the same amount of expenses and health insurance costs, but we're looking at Joe, Sally, and Cindy. Okay, and Joe's 55, Sally's 60, and Cindy's 65, all right? Now, Joe's got $800,000, and he's got monthly expenses, his baseline expenses of $4,000 a month. Now, your baseline expenses are what you need to survive on the day-to-day, -to, -day, to go to Publix to buy your groceries. What do you need for the guy who cuts your yard? What do you need for just your baseline expenses, your water bill, your cable bill? Whatever your bills are that you cannot live without, that's your baseline expenses. So for Joe, it's $4,000 a month. Now, Joe's 55 years old, so Joe has health insurance cost of $1,000. Now, we're gonna do this until Joe is 65. So we've got 10 years of health insurance costs from 55 to 65. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give Joe a break because I'm gonna not put any inflation on his health insurance, okay? Now, you might be saying, oh, Drew, Joe's single here. There's no way his health insurance is gonna cost $1,000. He's 55 years old. Go to the marketplace, try to get a plan that's halfway decent, and you just tell me what the cost is. Keep in mind, you might be able to get a subsidy depending on how your income is distributed from your retirement assets, but for most of us working folk, we're saving money in pre-tax vehicles like 401ks and IRAs, and that's gonna show up on our tax return, and that's gonna hurt us when it comes to getting that subsidy for health insurance. So Joe's 55, he's got $800,000. Let's say it's in his 401k, and we're gonna use the rule of 55, which means that he can pull money out of his 401k if he retired in the year that he turned 55 from his current job. It's in all in his current 401k, so he can use it without paying a penalty. Now say that 10 times fast. So from age 55 to 67, we've got $4,000 in expenses of which we're gonna put 3% inflation on, okay? We've got $1,000 in health insurance, which we have no inflation on, and we're gonna earn 6% a year on our $800,000. Now, from 55 to 67, that's 12 years of expenses. At 65, his health insurance falls off, he's gonna go on Medicare, maybe a Medicare Advantage plan, get, he's gonna have a free plan. At 67, he's got $175,236. So at 67, our expenses have grown to $6,136. Now we've lost our health insurance cost, right? We lost that two years ago. 
So now we're kicking on our Social Security. Well, our Social Security is $2,400 a month. So 6,100 minus 2,400, that's 3,736. So he's basically out of money at 71 years old. Now, his Social Security is $2,400 a month. He's taking in his full retirement age, but he retired at 55. So he doesn't have a full 35 working years for Social Security. So when Social Security is calculating his full retirement check, if he retires at 55 and we've only worked for 28 years or 30 years, they're going to put zeros in the years that he didn't work. And they're going to do a division on that to come up with his PIA, his primary insurance amount. And so for Joe, his Social Security is $2,400. It could have been $28,000, $3,000 if he kept working, but he wanted to retire early. So in this case, we're out at 71. So this is a scenario that we've really got to be cognizant of because we have health insurance costs and we have a lower Social Security because we stopped working. All right, let's go to Sally, right? Sally was the middle one. I think Cindy was the far one. So Sally's 60. Sally's got $800,000, all right? We're going to look at the same expenses, same health insurance. The only thing that's changing is age, okay? So Sally's worked till 60, and she saved $800,000 by the age of 60. Now, her expenses are the same as Joe. She's got $4,000 in baseline expenses. She's going to have a health insurance cost of $1,000 for five years, so 60 to 65. And then at 67, she's going to kick on Social Security. Now, we're going to earn 6% on this $800,000 in the market, and we're going to have 3% inflation. So from 60 to 67, her investments go to $635,465 because we're having to pull money off of our retirement investing accounts. Now, at 67, our expenses have grown to 5,067. We lost that health insurance two years ago, right? We went at 65, we went on Medicare, we got a Part C plan which is a Medicare Advantage plan, which covers our doctors, our hospitals, our prescriptions, all in one little package. Some plans are free, some plans cost uh, you know, $20 a month, $100 a month, whatever, it depends on your state and where you're at. If you need help with that, contact, contact us in the description. $5,000 is our expenses. We're kicking on Social Security, it's $2,600 per month. Now, she worked five extra years than Joe. So she's got a bump of $200 a month or $2,400 a year in her social security. $2,467 is what she has to pull off of her investments at 67 to survive. Again, 6% is our rate of return, 3% inflation, we're out at 88 years old. Now, what we're not including in this scenario or in Joe's scenario is a home, okay? So we might have a home that we could sell, do a reverse mortgage. This is a pretty good plan. And I feel pretty good about this. So retiring at 60 with $800,000, there might be other variables that we're not counting in here. Maybe there's a rental property with some rental income. Maybe there's a pension. I don't know. Again, I just want to show you a simple S-I-M-P-L-E scenario for you to get a good idea for yourself. Now let's move to Joe, Cindy, Sally? No, Sally, Cindy. Let's move to Cindy, okay? So Cindy's 65, and she's worked until she's 65, and she's gonna retire at 65 with $800,000. Now, most of you would probably say, yeah, Drew, she can retire at 65 with $800,000. I know, but I just wanna show you the difference. So we have $4,000 in expenses, okay? Now, she doesn't have a healthcare cost because she, Joe, Sally, Cindy, because Cindy had a chronic health condition and she was getting really good health care at work. So she decided to continue to work because her health care was really important to her and she needed her company's plan to help pay for her health care cost. So she retires at 65, okay? No health insurance costs anymore because she's going on Medicare. We're going on Part C again, which is an Advantage plan. Now, she could choose a supplement at that point if she wanted to. This is not a Medicare video, but she goes on Part C, so we eliminate that cost. So from 65 to 67, earning 6% a year on her $800,000 with 3% inflation on her expenses, her money grows to $821,000. So we net about $21,000 in gains. Now, from 67 to 100, our expenses have grown to 4320. Again, there's going to be 3% inflation on that from 67 all the way to 100. 
Our Social Security is kicking on at $2,800 a year. Remember, she's worked her full 35 years. So when Social Security goes to calculate her PIA, her primary insurance amount, they're taking a full 35 working years into account and they're dividing that by 35 to get an indexed formula which finally gets your PIA. It's like Russell Crowe, a beautiful mind on a blackboard a lot of times. Okay, so 4,320 is her expenses, $2,800 is her social security, so she needs 1,500 bucks a month, right? Now this is gonna be inflated from 67 on. We're using the Your Financial EKG software when we're doing this, and at 100, she has $1.4 million. It's a pretty good scenario for her. So I really want you to take, a, take into account Joe at 55, we've got health insurance costs and we have lower social security because we retired early, okay? Sally, retired at 60, we still have that health insurance. Again, we have a lower social security amount. And then Cindy worked all the way to 65, so she got a full social security amount and she didn't have that health care cost. So you've gotta understand what are some of the pitfalls if I decide to retire early. And hey, if you wanna go through a financial EKG with me, Look in the description below, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.